Elsewhere on the extreme weather front, we've learned that this could be a harsh hurricane season with an above average number of storms. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is forecasting 13 to 20 named Atlantic storms with three to six major hurricanes. Now, these stronger and more frequent storms are making it increasingly tough for forecasters. Marshall Shepard is president of the American Meteorological Society and director of the Atmospheric Sciences Program at the University of Georgia, and he joins us from Atlanta. Good morning, Marshall. Good morning. So this is not the kind of news we want to hear. Why do you think this is going to be a particularly intense hurricane season? Well, well all of the ingredients that we look for as meteorologists are pointing towards an, an intense season. Uh, we're not in an El Nino year, so that certainly favors uh, an active season. Uh, the sea surface temperatures, the ocean waters are particularly warm and, and uh, we're essentially in a, in a long term pattern of active hurricane activity that we entered in around 1995. So all of those together point to an active season. Marshall, is there any link between the severe weather we're seeing like, like Superstorm Sandy and say, you know, the strong tornado in Oklahoma? You know, those are certainly independent events. I, I know there's a uh, a tendency to want to sort of think link everything together, but the storm Sandy occurred during the uh, hurricane season and the tornadoes in Moore, Oklahoma occurred during the severe weather season. In fact, uh, if you look at uh, a map of where you would have expected a tornado on May 20th, uh, that region was certainly one of the high probability regions. So uh, these are representative of the types of weather systems we would see, but uh, there is some concern that some of our weather systems in general are becoming more extreme. So just last week, pretty good timing, NOAA upgraded its computer system to increase its ability to forecast more accurately. Did that make a difference, particularly when it came to Oklahoma and the tornado there? You know, yeah, computers actually are how we make our day-to-day -day weather forecast. And the more computing horsepower we have, the better. So over the next several years, uh, NOAA and the National Weather Service will be upgrading its computing capacity. And as I've been quoted before, that's a game changer for the United States. It really brings us up to where we need to be to monitor the environments that will spawn out these types of tornadic storms. Uh, and so really, we are entering an era of improved computing and coupling that with some of the other capacities like uh, next generation weather satellites and dual polarization radar. Uh, we really are in, in exciting times in terms of technology for weather. At the same time this week, Marshall, one of the four national satellites went down that tracks our weather. A, a backup did kick in, but what kind of problems does that cause? Yeah, you know, I was joking the other day, kids today can't imagine listening to music on CDs, and we as the public can't imagine not knowing a hurricane is coming. And that's because of weather satellites. And as you noted, we did, and this is the second time we've lost that satellite for a bit in the last two years. Luckily, we did have a spare, but we're sort of riding on our spare tire right now without another spare in the trunk. What happens if that goes out? Well, the next generation satellites, they're launching in about two to three years. But with the budget sequester and other things, we hope that that wouldn't cause any delays in that next generation system. Otherwise, we won't get our new tires for a while. Not good news at all. Marshall Shepard in Atlanta. Thank you very much.